just thought it was a great 40-minute game from us. I mean, obviously it has some highs and lows in it, and, and um, you're going to have runs by a, a, a really good Oregon State team that has so many weapons and, and versatility to their game. I thought we managed the game incredibly well. Um, it's so exhausting to even attempt to try to win. <laughs> and I know our team is exhausted, but I thought they were really so good on the defensive end and that carried us and, and clearly, you know, making some shots was a, a big factor. But you, you, you hold that team to 51 points, you know, you got to talk mostly about just how good the defense was at holding that team down. All right, open the floor for questions. Jamie Vinnick, Cook fan. Coach, uh, first off, congrats on the win. Thank you. Uh, you know, the last two games just were kind of uh, unique in the sense you go down big against USC and then go up big against UCLA. This one kind of followed more of a of a standard pattern. You know, I think their biggest lead was 4-2, and then it just seemed that from there on it was your guys' game. I think they tied it up at 25, and then it never got closer than that. Just talk about kind of the, the grit of your team and not letting Oregon State go on a run, obviously a very talented team, and, and staying focused and kind of, you know, being able to battle through even some of those offensive droughts. Yeah. You know, I just – I thought the only thing that kind of got us – I mean, I was really happy with trying to sub a little bit more and get some rest for some players. And you always worry not just does what that does to your offense, but, but what happens on the defensive end. And does that, you know, all of a sudden, to, you know, take Charlize off the floor just to give her a blow, but she's so valuable on that end that, you know, you're afraid that they're going to they're gonna go for a run. So – I was uh, I was really happy with um, how we subbed and how we got s people some some you know blows. I was clearly happy that Bella got to play and played more in the first half, and I think that's been real hard on us to find some consistency um, when she gets in foul trouble and is on the bench the whole time. I thought her mindset to come in and be a factor was was huge on us. Just having a really good balance in the first half and. Like you said, I just felt like we got great looks at the start of the game. Some of them didn't go in, uh, but it just seemed like because we were so good defensively and they, they had to hurt, they had to really hunt for baskets and, and shots. We were so good rebounding that, you know, we just plugged away on the offensive end and, and scored enough to, to get a little cushion. Um, and then the second half, you just know it. Like I knew every, every time out, I was like, they're going go to they're gonna go zone, they're going to go zone, just be ready for it. And they did, and we were a little stagnant. But uh, I thought the the possessions that when we got Bella back in was was really huge for us. And again, credit to our team to to just kind of in the chaos of a game, kind of balance himself and and put some good possessions together. Yeah, you know, just in regard to Bella, you know, no Emma, no Jessica tonight, and um, you know, it's kind of on on Bella to eat so many minutes. And I think, you know, the concern I think you've mentioned a few times is just her getting into foul trouble. Um, going up against bigs of that size, I mean, 6'5", 6'6", 6'9", to be able to stay out of foul trouble and then also to come up with those two really key baskets kind of late, uh, I think when they had cut it to five, you know, how much does that kind of, to you, signal the maturity that Bella has had this year and, and, you know, how much she has grown where maybe last year she get, picks up three fouls in the first half or doesn't have that kind of impact on the game in the paint? It's just been a, a, a little bit of a roller coaster again, you know, she was so effective early in the season, and I, I don't really recall her always being in foul trouble. And then we got into that little stretch where it just like she couldn't stay on the floor. And she's trying really hard, but she gets, you know, she still hasn't learned how. I mean, if there's contact in the post and there's contact in the post and it stays contact, I mean, one more second of contact and it's on the D. And she hasn't learned just the art of release it, let it go, you know, live to fight another day. Or, you know, reassert, make it obvious that they're they're making the contact. And I think it's unbelievably hard to be a great post player on the offensive end and on the defensive end. And she came in at a spot where she was pretty raw and not real fundamental. So her growth, you know, both sides of the ball is is huge. And her her expectation of herself, her the standard that she's starting to to put, she's put great activity level practices together defensively this week and it showed up in the game today so those are examples of we've just got to we got to make sure the standard is high for her on the offensive end we got it she's got to do those moves like we recognize those moves she made tonight we haven't always recognized some of her shots that she's taken against in the heat of the battle so I think it's a big step for her growth and and again um you know, Bella, we, we all re we know we've got to watch it because she might be happy with herself tomorrow and, and she might not be wanting to come in and, and play, 
that's really not Bella anymore. She she will show up tomorrow morning and be ready to, to compete and get ready for UW. I don't think a bad game exists in the in the realm of Charlize Ledger Walker, um, but may, not a, her typical shooting night tonight um, at just three of thirteen. But all four other starters end up in double figures, and and that just kind of speaks to you know we've talked about all year the balance scoring and. You know, it, maybe last year Charlize has nine. It ends up in a in a fifteen point loss. This year it ends up in a seven point win against a good team. You know, just just talk about Crystal and Ula and Bella and uh, and and Yo all stepping up on a night that Charlize doesn't have her usual fifteen to sixteen. Well, we've talked about that. Like, um, you know, we're so much better, and anyone in the country is better if you have five people in double figures. Uh, you know, I don't think you can get someone at, with forty every night. Although there's a couple of kids out there that maybe do, but. You know, Charlize is going to bounce back with her shooting, and she's going to have great nights. But it's it's I haven't been worried about her. I've been worried about the other people getting quality looks and having the confidence to step up and make big big you know shots. And I thought Yo had an unbelievable game today. Her mindset, having to wear that mask, you know, coming off of COVID and and so many kids kind of getting their conditioning back. Uh, I thought her mindset was great. And they really guarded her pretty well. They just made a few mistakes, and, and that's that's a sign of a really good shooter to make people pay. Um, I told, I've told i told Ula after the game, and I feel like she's just kind of gone to another level of comfort with the game and, and herself and what she has to bring for us and what she has to do for us. And it's not the, you know, the – I'm going to rule over people. It's she's just a just an I think growing in her leadership and growing in her comfort of this. I'm showing up every day and, and I'm going to be what my team needs to be. And and because of that, she's not you know she's not holding on to mistakes too long. Uh, she gets put through those, and I just think she's even becoming a those two shots that she made. I thought were just an example of a, an older, experienced player that knows what she has to do to help her team win the game. So. Again, Crystal being Crystal, uh, it's it's a great sign for our team if we can get that. Tara still needs to. We got to get her points. We got to get her comfortable with what we're doing. But um, this is a good start for our team. Just on Tara though, you know, defensively she has to kind of you know play a, a bigger role in a in a physical term, just with you know so much size and and you know being shorthanded there. You, you just kind of in in that regard with Tara, I mean, how much have you seen the growth from her, even just in the defensive area and kind of in her basketball IQ? Is that how she's kind of progressed from day one to be able to battle against these, you know, these big physical uh, post players that Oregon State has? Right. I mean, I think it's a constant. Like, she's never probably, you know, in the history of her high school career, really had to guard some of the athleticism that she's had to guard in our league, and then you add length sometimes, and you're adding girth, you know, the size of some of the posts, or you have a Mac who can, you know, blow by you, can shoot the three, and then can post you up. And, you know, what we've asked her to do on the offensive end and learn basically four positions um, has stunted her a little bit. Like, you know, she gets in the middle of something and goes and doesn't do it as well as she should because she's like thinking about which position am I running? You know, that's hard on her. I think it, her minutes and her, her mind is only going to just over the next six weeks, it's going to calm down and she's going to feel more comfort there. But defensively, I think that is – that is she's good enough to guard with her length, people that are quicker than her. You know, she's, she's good at the rim. And she's – in post defense, again, just like we said with Bella and Ula, it's just – it's hard to be a great post defender in this league with who you have to guard. But it's something she's got to commit to. I love the fact that she kind of got in trouble a little bit with not rebounding in the first half, and she had a great rebounding effort in the second. She is so willing and so wants to be good that um, I know she'll get better on the on the one-on-one -on -one stuff. We have, to, we have to just practice that and practice that because they really did duck their head and – didn't just hurt her, they hurt a, a few of us. And I thought they took our aggressiveness on our on-ball defense and kind of turned the table on us. We took some chances and then they got to the rim and we didn't quite adjust and just really make them keep them in front of us. But that's that's what you have to do. You have to figure it out during the game. And, and it's, it's again, to win and, and learn those lessons is an awesome thing.